plan is to do lower body workout, legs. Um, the moment, I've got a little bit of an injury, my hip, so everything is going to be very much posterior dominant, so working glutes, hamstrings. Um, what we're going to do is talk through the exercises, um, talk to you guys about how we can manipulate mechanics of movement um, to target different muscle groups. So, first exercise I'm going to start with is a good morning. Um, so, a good morning is a hip extension exercise. So, we're flexing at the hip and going through an extension. Okay guys, something I just want to talk about very briefly. Um, so the big advantage of these type of movements um, is from a biomechanics perspective, you need to understand that the amount of force that your muscle needs to generate is not just the amount of force um, that you have in the bar, it's not just the external load. So what we also need to consider is the position of the load relative to whatever joint or muscles that are causing that movement. So in this case, I'm also just ex or flexing and extending from the hip. So what's happening here, as I'm flexing at the hip on the way down, the load is getting further away in terms of horizontal distance from my hip. So at the lowest range of motion, the bar that's on my shoulders is quite a far distance away from my hip. So what we need to do to actually calculate the amount of force, which is called a, a moment, to overcome that load is multiply that distance by the load in the bar plus the load generated by our upper body weight. So, the big advantage of being able to manipulate this distance is that we can generate the same amount of force from, in this case, our glutes and hamstrings, with lighter loads than we would require if the distance was smaller. So if we were doing a, a normal back squat, for example. Thing I want to talk about is specificity um, and this is something that I mentioned briefly on my Facebook um, two or three days ago. So what you're going to see today is I'm going to do lots of different hip extension exercises. So from all my exercises I'm going to be extending the hip um, and you're going to ask why is this idiot doing the same thing over and over again. Okay so the difference with all these exercises is overall all hip extension the point at which the maximum force is generated within each of them is very, very different. Um, and again, it comes back to what I was talking about at the start with regards to the position of the bar relative to the hip in this case, because the hip is what we're moving from, we're rotating about. So, as you saw in a good morning, the point at when I'm flexed the most, the load is, the, is at the furthest distance away from my hip. So that means the largest load that I need to generate is at that point when I'm flexed at the hip. Um, so if we want to talk about generating force specific to movement, uh, for example, when I'm in this position and I'm running, I'm flexed at the hip and I'm generating load. Um, so the, amount of, the highest amount of force that I need to generate is at that point. Um, and that's going to vary with a number of different exercises that I'm going to talk you guys through today. Okay guys, so as you can see again, I'm doing another hip extension exercise. This one called the reverse hyper. Um, the difference being here 
from, well, from two perspectives, we'll talk about specificity again. One, the pattern contraction. So as you saw with good morning, we started with an eccentric contraction, so the muscle was lengthening, which was the bit on the way down, followed by the concentric action, which was the hip extension on the way up. Here, the movement is initiated by hip extension, so a concentric action, so shortly, um, and then the second half on the way down, we've got that lengthening action or the eccentric action. The second thing then, again, what we talked about when we did the good morning was here, the largest distance from my hip occurs at the top of the range of motion. So instead of when my hip was flexed, as it was in the good morning, now the distance from my hip to the load, which is these in this case, occurs when I'm completely extended. So now the max force that I have to generate is in that fully extended position. Okay, so as you can see, um, we're on to our third hip extension exercise. Um, I suppose the first question is, what is the difference between this and the two that we've already done? Why is this idiot just doing hip extension exercises? Um, so it goes back to the two concepts that we've already talked about um, with regards to specificity. Um, so in this case, the point at which the, the moment or the force is largest, again, is at that point of full extension. Um, so in this case, so when I'm at the, the top, the range of motion or the initial point of movement. Here, the weight um, is furthest away from the point of rotation. As you can see, as I get dropping down, my shoulders where I'm holding the weight is getting closer to my hip. So what that means is, as the distance is shortening, the amount of force that you need to generate through glutes, hamstrings, is diminishing. And as that distance increases, so once I'm at the very top again, it is at its largest. Um, so the point of maximum force generation, if we're looking at a curve in this case, is at that point of full extension. Um, so very, very similar to what we did um, in the previous exercise. One difference then obviously is that in the previous exercise, the, the, the rotation was coming from movement about the hip from the, the legs. In this case, we're obviously rotating about the hip using our upper body. Um, however, the, the muscles that cause that movement are the same in both cases. The other difference here is with this exercise, we start with an eccentric contraction. So I'm starting at the top range of motion, lowering myself down, and as I'm lowering myself down, my muscles are lengthening. On the way up then, I'm extending through the hip, and my muscle is shortening. So the pattern of activation is slightly different to what it was in the previous exercise. Okay guys, so just finished those three hip extension exercises that um, I talked you guys through. Ideally what I would also do on this day, because it's a lower body day, is um, hit things like squats, power cleans, where I'm also going to work my posterior chain. Um, today was very much hamstring, glutes, um, not much quads. So what I'm going to move on to now is I'm going to go outside doing some lying hamstring curls, because everything I've done so far has been very much focused on glutes. Um, obviously with hamstring as well, but my focus has been on glute contraction. Um, and I'm going to superset those hamstring curls with some calf raises.
So, we did two calf exercises. Um, why? Because we've got two main calf muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus. So we're doing standing calf raises, um, remaining toiling gastro. The reason being, um, it's a much larger muscle across the two joints. Because it's larger muscle when we're doing standing, so knee extended, um, hits that muscle much more. But when we bend the knee, because the gastro obviously also crosses the knee, it's in a lengthened position, it's very hard for it to contract in that position. So it becomes a silly standing exercise. So, bent knee, calf raises, seated calf raises, concentrated on soleus, um, standing ones, really, really focused on gastro.